Hi, thanks for joining us. I'm Elizabeth with Scola, and today we're here at Harmony School of Innovation, and we're here with Sarah, the principal. Thanks for joining us today. So, Sarah, would you tell us a little bit about your mission and about your school? Sure. Um, within the Harmony system, our, our schools were created to give parents choice and to be able to, to offer opportunities to students through education that prepare them for success in the current day, but also prepare them for college and life beyond that and um, to allow them to be successful citizens. Great, and I love the campus, it's beautiful. So um, can you tell us a little bit about some of the different things, like what would be like, you would say the three main things that really set you apart from some of the other schools and opportunities that are available here in Carrollton? Sure, from, and I've, I've been with the Harmony System for, uh, for 11 years, and so over that time, I overwhelmingly hear parents talk about the small community atmosphere, even though we're a charter school that doesn't serve a specific community, we still have our own community within the building. And whether that's among the families, between staff and families, that everyone feels like family here. Um, even though we don't, we're not all neighbors, we, we come from all over, but, but it's, it's family when we're here. And that allows us to have a really collaborative relationship with each other and with our families so that we all know that our common purpose is serving the students. That's amazing. So Sarah, a, a lot of parents, um, you know, have the question of what is a charter school? Um, can you just explain a little bit more about that and what the programs are, how that makes it unique? Sure. Um, so charter schools um, give parents choice to, to look for school options outside of their, their maybe their zoned neighborhood schools. And with that, um, parents are able, it's, we're a public charter school, so we're still funded by state and federal tax dollars and um, or state, state and federal funding uh, is, is our funding source. And so parents are able to apply and enroll their, any, any student, so as a public charter. So we do offer all the programs that any public school would. We have special education programs, we have English second language learner programs, we have um, gifted and talented programs. So any, any service beyond general education that students need, we, have, we offer those as well. So many, you know, some, some schools are, that don't offer all of those programs, but we have all of those here as a public school and we're able to, to meet the needs of, of any of our students through those programs. That's amazing. I know there's a lot of kind of common questions that you get asked, so maybe answering some of those. Right, a lot, of, and most commonly we get asked about, um, as people are learning about our school, um, about what is the tuition. So as a public charter, where it's, it's free of charge, um, so there is no tuition to attend the school and have access to all of the programs that we offer. Um, our students do um, have a dress code so we have um, those available shirts available for purchase here once students enroll and um, so they can have their their polo shirts with um, with the logos and everything for for the dress code and then um, one of the other programs that we offer because we know often parents work later and can't pick up their kids always at th right at three o'clock mm -hmm. and so we have an after school program that that is here in-house um, and they they come their staff come to our building and use our building for after school care and they're here from until six o'clock every evening so parents that can pick up their students at school after work and don't have to worry about making a transportation connection after school. That's great. Lots of opportunities there at the community. So you can definitely see there's a great connection. Yes, we want to make sure because we know that uh, when you make a choice to, to not um, attend a neighborhood school or some or that might be further away, um, that it's not always as convenient. And so we want to make sure that we offer something um, to, to ensure that parents know that kids are taken care of and that make it feasible for them to make that change for their families. That's great. You guys are doing an amazing job. Can you talk a little bit about the community um, and some of the different, like who you're serving, who mm -hmm. your school is for? Sure, our campus is, um, is K through five. So we serve kindergarten through fifth grade. So our, in, in that we get that early education and having that positive experience because we know when they have that, 
that positive foundational education experience, it sets them up to be to be risk takers, to be confident in themselves, and to to just try more things moving forward when they, they're successful and have a good foundation in education. Absolutely. That's where you start is the most important. Yes. Um, can you talk a little bit about your the learning styles that you have here um, and just your teaching philosophies? Sure. Our, uh, as far as systems that we use, um, our teachers all have been trained and utilized the whole brain teaching system. And so that actually, especially for elementary kids, allows them to use really their whole body in learning. Um, even as they're, they're learning new vocabulary um, for you know science, they're also learning is the, for the water cycle. They're, they learn signals and things to ways to help them remember, which is good for all students but especially our, our English second language learners or maybe special education learners that need that trigger to help them remember that new difficult vocabulary word, they're, they're able to, to do those body motions that trigger their brain to be able to do the work or participate in class discussions. So Sarah, can you tell us a little bit more for families that are interested in the different types of learning styles that you mm -hmm. offer, different programs, can you talk a little bit about that as well? Sure. One of the programs that our teachers are, its we've been doing the program from Teach Like a Champion for the last three years and it will continue into the next school year. Uh, with, and with that, students, are, students and teachers are, are using and learning strategies that really build student knowledge from the, of being able to discuss and defend their answers and, and logically reason why they're solving pro math problems with different strategies or thinking through science solutions when they're um, working on, on lab projects. So they're able to, to build uh, habits of discussion and, and be able to participate in class in a greater in greater way with just not yes and no questions. There's a lot of rigor and thinking behind what they're doing and, um, and purpose to their learning and make connections between, often between subjects and like, oh, it's, it's science class, but I just use math to figure this, this lab problem out um, and being able to, to really just be more, more well-rounded and more uh, worldly in their applications of their learning. Yeah, and you'd mentioned earlier um, some of the STEM programs. Can you share a little bit more about that as well? So yes, and next year we will have um, a STEM elective for all of our students in kindergarten through fifth grade, twice a week. So uh, with a with a STEM teacher, so that it'll be various aspects of, of STEM, but also you know even in our general ed classrooms, they're having they they have access to technology. There's STEM connections. Um, even in, in reading class or math class with their general education teacher and the students, you know, they all have a, a coding unit through their technology class. Even kindergartners, I'm always amazed when I visit cl kindergarten class of what, what five and six year olds are yeah. capable of. They they blow me away from my kindergarten days. But, um, you know, that they, they know basic coding when they finish that unit um, with their technology teachers. That's amazing. It is. <laughs> Are there any other programs or things that you want to highlight and make sure that parents um, know about Harmony School of Innovation? And I think from the parent side, and we've talked a lot about what this, what we do for the students, um, one of the things that I, I think is, is great for our school is we actually have uh, quarterly parent academies. And so that gives parents an opportunity to come to campus um, or ha and have that opportunity to learn more about helping their kids at home. It might be a program from our interventionists about reading strategies or how to, you know, if your kids are reading a book at home, how, what basic questions can you talk to them about um, to, for basic reading comprehension and engaging with your kids in their work um, and strategies or games to play to help with math skills and build basic skills. But then we also have done programs on um, helping uh, Families plan for college. One of one of our you know our secondary campus is right across the parking lot from us for six through twelve, um, and and our many of our families are that are graduating from that from that campus are first generation college bound students, and so we know that saving for college and talking about financial literacy is important for the kids, but also for the parents of knowing how do I make that possible. We have our kids here because that's something we want for them, but. How do we make that possible as a family? 
That's amazing. So there's obviously lots of opportunities for families. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about um, your staff and your experience as well? So our staff is um, is very experienced. Myself, I've been I've been with Harmony for 11 years. I started as a teacher myself. Um, spent several years as a, a campus administrator and then a district administrator, and then I had the great opportunity to come back to campus and be with the kids. That's where my heart is, um, and so so that's that's a great opportunity. And then with the uh, our assistant principals have both been with with the system and for seven and nine years wow. um, and so and one of them has spent all nine of those years on this campus wow so um, our, our Dean of Academics is is really part of this community knows the families knows the needs knows the community well um, and so we're grateful for her long-term experience um, at this campus with these families and our teachers range from you know first year to teachers to, to 20 year veterans um, so we have, and, and that creates a great diverse learning community um, because all of our teachers are, even though they have lots of experience, education is always changing. The needs of the, the kids, the needs of the community, even just this year with learning how to use new technology programs yeah. <laughs> um, successfully. So there, there's a great supportive um, atmosphere among the staff and learning from each other always. Amazing. You can definitely feel that sense of you know, you guys are really doing, you're moving from your heart. So I, I really appreciate that. And, and you can feel that just walking in here. So I just want to thank you, Sarah, for your time today. Um, you can obviously visit the school on their website, or you can go to scola.io and check out their profile to find out more about Harmony School of Innovation. So thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you.